a super quick and easy guide for total beginners to the basics of HTML and CSS and how they work together to build a website. A website is mostly made up of HTML. If you right click on a web page in your browser, for example in Chrome, and select Inspect, you'll open the developer's tools. This lets you see the HTML structure of the page you're currently viewing, and you can even temporarily change it to experiment. But don't worry, these changes are only in your browser, and they'll disappear once you refresh. HTML code consists of characters enclosed within angled brackets, known as the HTML elements. Most elements are made up of two tags, one opening tag and a closing tag. The closing tag is similar to the opening tag, but includes an additional forward slash before the element name. The tag defines the type of content. For example, the P tag tells the browser to display the enclosed content as a paragraph. The tags themselves are not displayed. The H1 to H6 tag, for example, are for different headings in different levels of importance, with H1 being the highest and H6 the lowest. We can also add attributes to a tag, which provide additional information, like using a class attribute to apply styles. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. There are also self-closing elements like the image tag, which pulls in the content, in our case the image, through the attribute called source. But how can we set up an entire page with these elements? Well, the most basic structure of an HTML page consists of an HTML element, which contains the head and the body section. The head contains information for the browser, which are not visible, like the page title. So that is the little name that you see in your browser tab, some meta description for search engines, and you can also link style sheets and fonts and so on. The body section holds everything that appears on the page. So your text, your images, buttons, everything you design. Here's a list of the most common tags that you might find useful. You can take a screenshot. Usually a website's homepage is named index.html by convention. You can also create subpages like an about page or projects. To link to those subpages, you can use the anchor tag, A. This creates a clickable link that you can place anywhere on your page. You can also link to external websites outside of your page. However, if you open a pure HTML page, you'll notice that while the content is there, it doesn't look very nice. And that is where CSS comes in. While HTML controls the content of your page, CSS controls the appearance of your HTML elements, like colors, fonts, spacing, and layout. To connect your CSS file to your HTML file, you add a link to it in the head section. Now imagine your HTML elements as invisible boxes. CSS allows you to create rules that control how each box and its content look and behave. A CSS rule consists of two main parts, a selector, which targets one or more elements in your HTML, and a declaration, which defines how these elements should be styled. The declaration itself is composed of a property, such as color, and a corresponding value, like a hex code for the color. You can add multiple declarations within the curly brackets, and you can also combine multiple selectors to apply the same style to several elements. In CSS, selectors can target plain tags, but you'll often see classes used instead. Classes are assigned inside the HTML tag and then referenced in CSS, simply by adding a dot before the name. Classes are more flexible and reusable as they can be applied to different elements for consistent styling. There are more ways to use selectors in CSS. Worth knowing are the universal selector, which is a star sign and targets the entire page. We also have IDs and they are assigned pretty much like classes in HTML and then called in CSS by putting a hashtag before the name. However, IDs should only be used for styling one specific element, not multiple. While you can use them in CSS, they're typically used in JavaScript for dynamic behavior. You might also see selectors that target elements nested inside other elements. For example, this one only targets a paragraph element inside the class called sale. 
One important thing to know about CSS is that it's cascading. This means if you apply multiple styles to the same element, the last one will take priority. For example, if you set the color to blue and then later to red, the text will show red because the last rule takes priority. Here's a list of the most common CSS selectors. You might want to screenshot it. So how do we take the next step and actually start building? You'll need a code editor to set up your HTML and CSS files. While Visual Studio is still a popular option, I highly recommend starting with Cursor Code Editor. It contains an AI-powered coding assistant that you can ask questions to help you write code and interact with. This makes a huge difference in speed and your learning curve. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button, there is more coming. If you'd like to dive deeper into this subject of getting started with coding and building your own product, visit me at moonlearning.io.